One of the most important things you need to look at on the soil test is cation exchange capacity, or CEC for short. What it is, is it's the holding capacity of your soil. It's basically a measurement of the type of clay, the amount of clay, and the amount of organic matter you have in your soil. The higher the number, the more of everything you can hold, from water and nutrients, herbicides. The lower the number, the less of everything you can hold. All right, before we get too far down this discussion, you may think, oh no, my CEC on my soil is low. That means I just can't hold much and I can't be productive. Wrong answer. When you look at where some of the world record yields have been grown, they've often been grown in soils with single digit CECs, which we would consider very light and low organic matter soil. So maybe let's talk about this range just a little bit. When we look at a cation exchange capacity of 20 or above, we've got a fairly heavy soil with a high capacity to hold water and nutrients. When we're in the 10 to 20 range, we've got kind of a medium soil that can hold quite a bit of water, quite a bit of nutrients, but not as much as some of the heavier soil. And then of course, when we're down below 10 in the single digits, we've got pretty light soil, specifically five and below, we've got light and low organic matter soil. Now the reason why it's important to have a number for this is because to everyone, soil is relative. Just as an example, I was up in Canada a couple of years ago and I was talking to a farmer who showed me a couple of soil tests. The first one he goes, yeah, this is my light soil and it was a 33 cation exchange capacity. Well, to me, light means less than 10 CEC. For him, it was just relative on his farm. That was the lightest stuff he had on his farm, but it was still ridiculously heavy, could hold a tremendous amount of water and nutrients and herbicides. And for him, his heavy soil was a 41 CEC. So anyway, just by having a specific number, now we know exactly what we're talking about. We're all on the same page, regardless of where you're at. If if you have sand or heavy ground or whatever it is with a number, now we can start making some good decisions. Well, one of the nutrients that we'll be really curious to see the cation exchange capacity is nitrogen. When you think about nitrogen, one of the biggest fears that most farmers are going to have is, well, that could leach out from me and I'm sure that's something you think about on your farm as well. We look at cation exchange capacity as a great idea of how much nitrogen our soils can hold. When we put together a nitrogen management program, our rule of thumb is to take 10 times the cation exchange capacity as a good estimation of how much that soil can hold at one time, how many pounds of nitrogen it can hold. So if you had a cation exchange capacity of 10, well 10 times 10 is about 100 pounds of nitrogen that soil can hold at any one time. If you had a cation exchange capacity of 20, you could hold 200 pounds of nitrogen at one time. Now as our yields keep going up on crops like corn and wheat, we need to have more nitrogen available throughout that season. So this is going to give you an indication of, can I put a whole bunch of nitrogen on at one time, or am I gonna to have to spoon feed nitrogen throughout the season? Well, I just say this too, you still have to use some common sense here. It's not like if your soil can hold 200 pounds of nitrogen, it's gonna hold it forever or anything like that. But at least it gives you a general idea of how far you can push it on those nitrogen applications. The other thing with cation exchange capacity, you may notice on herbicide labels, especially labels for products with soil residual control. Then on some of the labels, it will say, if you have a higher CEC, you may need to apply a slightly higher rate. Or if you have a very low CEC, you may have to use a little lighter rate so you don't have crop injury because there's nothing to tie that herbicide up and it may be pulled into the crop really quickly. One other thing that I'll say, Darren mentioned that farmers are getting really high yields with low cation exchange capacity numbers. Well, obviously, if the cation exchange capacity is low, it can't hold a lot of water. So in those situations, it's gotta be irrigated ground. If the ground is really heavy, it has a high CEC, then many farmers can get by without irrigation. So this also gives you a good idea of whether or not you truly need irrigation if you're trying to raise big crops. Well, cation exchange capacity is certainly important to understand if you want to raise those big yields, but so is getting weed control in line on your farm. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 